So there is a ton of GPTs to choose from when it comes to this new GPT store. In today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and give my opinion on the ones that I think actually hold value, the ones that probably don't need to be paid for, and the ones that are just overall pretty cool. Hey y'all, welcome back. We are gonna be diving into that GBT store. I'm gonna just go over basically GBTs that I see value with. I'm gonna give some opinions here that might be slightly controversial. I'm probably gonna ruffle some feathers like I've said in the past. So if you're one of these GBT creators, don't take it personally. It's just my insight. From here though, make sure to follow me on Twitter if you want daily updates on artificial intelligence videos coming out and stuff of this nature. I also wanna point out, I did a video on a Mia GBT yesterday. I like the concept, y'all. Some of y'all were too, like, y'all were ruthless in the comments. Some of y'all were just going at the creator of Mia and the overall functionality of, like, basically, y'all were ruthless. Chill out, chill out. I understand, I d totally understand what y'all were saying. I think the cool thing about this video, though, is more of just the concept itself, like the idea of talking to a language model in more of like an amicable way. With that being said, let's jump into this video. Okay, so welcome to the long held GBT store. First thing that I want to give my opinion on right off the bat is they need to, uh, obviously it's all early days, so you know, it takes time, but man, they need to update this search method and how users find GBTs, it's too limited. But from here though, we have obviously our, all our different sections and we can start playing around with different GBTs to choose from. So we got our first section here called trending. Side note, one other thing I want to point out as well, which may be misleading, is when it gives a little number list, like one, two, three, four, five, six, I was under the impression that this meant that in the writing category, this is the number one most popular GBT. This was the wrong impression. The actual reality here is that they seem to be ciphering through different GBTs and pushing different types of GBTs daily. So don't take that number list too seriously as that could be very misleading as it mis misled me. That being said though, we got some options here. So. I'm gonna go ahead and just give my opinion on some of these. I'm not gonna dive into deep tutorials. I'll probably dive into more deep tutorials in later videos, so make sure to subscribe so you can actually see how to utilize these, such as all trails. I think that's cool. I love hiking and doing that kind of stuff. But let's just start on ground zero. What are we gonna start ground zero with, Corbin? Let's start with these PDF ones. So this was interesting because whether you know this or not, and it might even be on the suggested on the side, GBT can already analyze PDFs. So basically there's an attachment, we can add a PDF already without the help of these AI PDF and ask your PDF. So then I started asking myself, I'm like, okay, well, if GBT can already analyze PDFs itself, what's the use case here? So for example, if I go to ask your PDF here and I go to the website, it seems like the, it seems like the value point here is that this is basically going to be a Google drive for all of your underlying PDFs. E.g., let's say I upload 10 different legal documents, each one titled something separately. I can basically go into chat and call upon that specific legal document and start analyzing that with GBT. But then I was like, wait, we can do this without paying. As basically right now, this is expensive. You're telling me I have to pay an extra $20 where GBT Plus is already $20, so I have to pay $40 a month just to access this? Now there's probably more value here and if there is, let me know in the comments. But seeing all that, I'm going to make a video. And this is why I said this might be a little controversial. I'm probably going to ruffle some feathers. But I'm going to make a video to show you how to do what is incurring with this one and this one, where all we need to do is use Zapier as our backend and Google Drive and just basically do the same exact functionality, but for pennies on the dollar. Make sure to like for that, as that will come. So starting off here, I don't necessarily see the value of these PDF ones because you can already do it with ChatGPT. That being said, if you need to actually organize and you have a ton of PDFs, there could be value there, but there's an alternative way to approach this that doesn't cost or doesn't hurt the bank basically. And I'm gonna go ahead and show that in a later video. Next, number four is Canva. Canva is gonna be a miss y'all. Obviously the platform itself is amazing. If you don't know what Canva is, it's basically a free version of Photoshop, not as many capabilities. Canva is amazing. Unless they made a major update as recently, you can watch my whole Canva video on it. They've limited it drastically to the point that I can't upload an image in a chat and have it pushed into a design file for Canva. Now they may have updated it and there may be a bigger movement towards that way. So let me know in the comments if they have updated it. But from my experience up to this point, I would prefer using the Canva GBT in the context of just finding templates with keywords. Basically think of it as another search engine for Canva for the context of finding templates. 
Following this, I think ones that actually do have a ton of value and basically are really helpful if you're in that specific use case is going to be consensus and scholar AI. These are just super useful in the context of finding research papers. I remember going back in the back in the old days, you know, looking up Google Scholar and finding specific research papers. This is just extremely helpful. This is like if this is up your alleyway and you're basically looking up research papers daily or part of your labor, you're going to want to use one of those as that just really expedites the entire process. Following this, there is obviously the browsing feature with Chad GBT to allow us to search the internet, but that got extremely nerfed. Knowing that the biggest nerf that happened to the browsing feature for Chad GBT was the ability to add a link to a chat and actually search that specific link. This is due to Chad GBT getting sued. I did a whole video on this uh, a couple of days ago, basically how to circumnavigate that. But saying that, Let's actually try a web pilot here. I'm curious if this works. So let me go ahead and provide a link. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the blog for introducing GBTs. I'm gonna to come to web pilot and be like, can you summarize this? Okay, let's see. I'm gonna hit allow here. All right, so this is actually a big advantage. This is huge value point. So use web pilot. This got nerfed out of chat GBT. In the past, we were able to do the exact same type of prompting but now we can because they're getting sued. But now we can actually circumnavigate this using WebPilot. So this is actually a good kind of workaround here. Use WebPilot in the context of needing to provide specific links in the internet and get the information outside of those links. Good pointer there. Okay, so let's go ahead and scroll down and just start firing off by category. So right off the bat, out of all the ChatGPT's tools, I haven't personally used any of these actively. Even the web browsing, I'm pretty sure has issues still with the links, keep that in mind. Coming over to Dali here, this is really just pick or choose. I think the coolest use case I saw out of this one actually came from ChatGPT themselves when it came to the sticker one or sticker meal. Where is it at? Okay, so it seems like they actually don't have that anymore. Interesting, right? They used to have it. So basically you were able to actually generate a sticker design and have it pushed to stickermeal.com and print it. So out of the Dali ones, I think the one that stands out to me most is gonna be the super describe. This one's cool as basically, let's say I upload an image, like a real image of like a, my car it will give me like the prompt that would be associated with it for Dali. That's pretty cool. E.g. I could take that prompt, put it in another chat, and then that would be like the closest resemblance we could get to that kind of output, if that makes sense. I think I did a whole video on Super Describe as well, so you can go ahead and check that up. Um, on top of that, this is pretty cool. This is like the, the idea of creating prompts specifically for other language models um, or just mid-journey. And let's go ahead and check out writing. So writing has just a bunch of different options. What I will tell you right now when it comes to writing as a overarching thing in just the market itself is I hmm. see when I say this kind of stuff, this kind of stuff, y'all, I'm really shooting myself in the foot for sponsorships, but I'm trying to be true of y'all. Maybe I haven't seen enough information on these topics, but personally, I don't think a lot of these AI writing tools are necessary outside of GBT. GBT can handle a lot of the copywriting that you would want from maybe other uh, software products that exist on the market right now. I'll leave it at that. So obviously with productivity, we got Zapier, Gotta love it. We also got uh, the ability to diagrams, convert anything. Like this is more of like really cool stuff. I've actually done videos on convert anything and the diagram one. Keep that in mind. You can create diagrams in ChatGPT, which cool is that creating diagrams in ChatGPT, we can also export them into images and stuff of this nature. Like just, it gets more intuitive for sure. Coming over to research and analysis, kind of already went over this, but consensus and scholar AI are definitely hard hitters if that's your context. Me personally, I don't look up that kind of stuff anymore. I used to in college, don't need to anymore. But I know if, the, if this did exist and I was in college still, I would 100% use it. Coming over to programming. See, this is what I, okay. Actually, I wanna do a study here. I wanna do a study here. So let me know in the comments. Go to your GBT right now, open a new tab and go to the store. Am I number nine for y'all? Like, let me know, because obviously this would only be people that are watching it today, maybe tomorrow. Let me know if I'm number nine, because basically what I want to prove here or get an idea of is, are you seeing the same store I'm seeing or am I getting randomized GBTs thrown my way? I really don't know. But let me know um, from your perspective what's incurring here. That being said, that's pretty cool if you see that on your side as well. Um, so out of the program, it would be this one. No, I'm just joking. Uh, that's actually pretty cool in the sense of that's just creating a GBT to create a GBT. Um, everything over here though is honestly, I don't have enough, um, background in this context in the sense of using a GPTs for code. Personally, when I write code, I just use custom instructions. That being said, there's probably value in creating a GBT or GBTs of this nature for very specific use cases. 
me personally, when I'm running code, I'm either just doing a custom instructions because I don't really need a specialized GBT to write code. It's more in the sense of like, hey, can you just write this out real quick or do this real quick? So personally, I don't have any affinities towards any of these, but what I've heard is that this one's a really good one. I've heard good things about uh, gear more. Now, that all being said, it seems like they are going to be cycling out this number four here um, every week. So there'll be four new ones. How they choose those, I have no clue. It seems like the way that they're structuring them now is basically three main companies and then one random uh, GBT that's by a solo creator. Keep that in mind. Also, for context, some of y'all might be asking yourself, okay, if I'm number nine on programming and you truly see it on your front end as well, how many chats are currently operating or have been ran in that GBT? It was around, it's around 10,000. So 10,000 chats got me at number nine. That being said, I have no clue if that has any type of rele relevancy when it comes to what's pushed on these different sections. So that just about does it. This was much more of a general video as I wanted to just give my insight on GBTs that I've used in the past, stuff so that you should understand from my experience. I plan on diving deeper into a lot of those GBTs and giving like specialized tutorials on those GBTs, like the first one I'm probably gonna do is the all trails one just because I do like hiking. It's honestly, it's not like a passion of mine, but it's like, uh, you know, let's go on a good hike. Let's, let's, let's see nature. Let's smell the air. Let's touch grass. All right, so if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you leave a like. It's completely free. If you wanna see more about GBTs and everything about them, check out the playlist at the end here as we're gonna be able to dive into everything we need to know about creating them, sharing them, custom, whatever it may be. I'll see you in the next video. So we reached the end of the video. Let me know in the comments what GBTs you want me to see and check out later this week and just do tutorials on that you think are super cool. That's the playlist I was referring to. That's what YouTube says you'll like. And that button right there, just click it. Just to see what happens when you click this. We don't know what happens. Let's just see what happens.